so here we are with our middle of the week little mini lesson. Well, I say mini lesson, it's actually kind of like a full blown lesson. I didn't mean for that to happen. I was trying to keep this very simple and concise. Uh, and actually what we're gonna cover is very simple. It's just one little lick really that's repeated over the, the three different chords. Uh, but I ended up making tablature and the jam track and all the extra stuff that go with it. So if you're a premium member and you want the access to these extra things like the tab and the uh, jam track, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com and do a search for VG30. This is kind of a new thing I'm trying. VG is standing for vlog. I started calling these vlogs even though they're actually lessons. I don't know, my stuff is all over the place. But that's how you can find the extra materials if you need it. I'm gonna try and give you everything you, you need in this video anyway, so if you're not a premium member, you can still get a lot of value. I just wanted to give the extra stuff to premium members. Um, okay, so we're looking at a Jerry Garcia style lead thing that is played off of the A chord shape. So everything we're going to be doing, well, not everything, but most everything, is connected to this chord shape. So if you can play your A chord down in first position like that, where you bar the first four strings on the second fret, and you play your middle strings, five, four, three, and two, that's where it all comes from. So you got to get comfortable with that shape and being able to see that shape, and not just in this position, but in other positions. So we've just moved it up. We've taken the bar and we've slid it up to the seventh fret now. And I've got my index finger on the fifth fret, fifth string. Now I'm playing a D chord, which is the four chord. So this is just a jam in the key of A. It's three chords, an A chord, a D chord, and an E chord. One, four, five. And we're going to be playing in that kind of, uh, it's got kind of that Grateful Dead groove thing, that pocket that they, they tend to create that's kind of... That kind of thing, real cool little uh, little jam track that goes with it. So we're gonna start off by playing over the A chord, which is our one chord, and the first lick or little phrase that we're gonna learn sounds like this. Now all of that is done between the second fret and the fourth fret. So when you're playing this chord shape here, I want you to think about the box that you have here. In this case, when we're playing an A, it's the fourth fret to the second fret. On the third string, fourth string, and fifth string. Now we've got this one extra note that's right there on the fifth, uh, fifth string, third fret. But it's these notes that give you that pentatonic scale jam band thing. And you can play them off of your A chord shape. So when you're playing an A chord like this, Look at all the stuff I can do right off of that chord shape. If you learn nothing else, just get this. This is kind of the meat of this thing anyway, is to take this chord shape. Now I could sit and jam on that all day long, just between the fourth fret and the second fret. So watch this, this is where it gets cool. If I take that A chord and I slide it up here, so that I'm playing it in this position, now I'm playing a D chord, so this is my four chord. But I can do the same stuff I was doing down here. You just gotta move it up, so you gotta picture it in your mind. So now there's the bar where my index finger was down here, right? So now I can go. stuff is happening just like it did down here. I can do it over any chord now. It's a really, really big takeaway. And I want that to be kind of the meat of this whole thing. It's something I see Jerry Garcia doing quite a bit, and I just thought it was kind of the perfect little lesson that, you know, I could make a song out of it. So let's go back and look at the specifics of what was happening. Open fifth string, hammer on between the third fret and the fourth fret on the fifth string, and then we go to the second fret, fourth string. And we come up to the fourth fret, back to the second fret. So all together we have. Just remember that hammer on between the third fret and the fourth fret on that fifth string. And then while I've got my finger down on the uh, second fret fourth string, I come up to the second fret third string. So it's right behind that bar. So it looks like this. And then ring finger goes back down to the fourth fret fourth string. So that's your first little call thing. Think of it like a call and response, it's the call. And then you stop it. And then I went. 
Now that's a full bend on the fourth fret third string. It's still in that box that we just talked about. So when you're looking at this box, and we're looking at the fourth fret notes, you can really only bend that third string. So you do a full bend, release it, back to the second fret, fourth fret, back to the second fret on the fourth string. So we have... And then we're going to go back to where we played before. And that's how it ended the phrase. So it's three, four on the fifth string, and then two, four on the fourth string. So all together, the call goes. And then the response. So that's more or less the cadence of this whole jam. So that's what I'm playing over the one chord. And then it repeats itself, so I went through it twice. Now the second time, the call was the same, but the response was a little different. I just wanted to give you a different option. So I went. Now this is a, another thing that you can do with where you're playing double stops, which means two strings at once harmonized notes. Uh, off of this A chord shape. So using this chord shape as my visual anchor, I'm gonna come up here where I've got my middle finger on the fifth fret second string and my ring finger on the sixth fret third string. So we've got that. And then we're gonna come down two frets. And then back to the A chord, strings two and three. So when you play this A chord or when you see this A chord in your mind, you've got this. It doesn't sound like much, but you'd be surprised what you can do with that. With blues, with country. With country, I can go. I can bend right there and get a real nice double bend, which you hear in a lot of country. Or with the blues, I can go. Walk it down chromatically, each step. Or I can walk it up chromatically. I hear that in some song. So just play around with these things and you can see that um, you get a lot more out of them than just what I'm showing you. But you can look at these as the guidelines. Okay, so that second time through, there's the call, then we have that, and then we go back, and then back here. So, and then I came down here and went. So that's just, taking advantage of that little box that happens between the second fret and fourth fret that we talked about. So I went ahead and kept the bar there, first four strings, and I played strings four and three, but I've got my ring finger on the fourth fret, fourth string. Then you let that go, play strings four and three behind the second fret, back uh, to the fourth fret, fourth string. So that final lick goes. All right, so it goes. Now that's some awesome stuff that you're learning off of that chord shape. Look at it up here over a D. Here it is over an E. See, I can already jam just with that. If I learn nothing else, I mean, I've got this little formula for jamming off of the A chord shape. So you're getting a lot of substance here. All right, so let's back it up from the beginning. go to the D chord, the four chord, and I went same thing, but we just slid it up. So we're starting on the fifth fret, fifth string, just like when we started with the open fifth string. So you just have to visually transpose everything. That's what I do. So I start here and then I go and come up and now my box is between the seventh fret and the ninth fret for, for the D chord. And then I came up and did the same double stop like we did down here. Right? And then I threw in this lick. This is another one. Kind of a bluesy thing. I love this lick. So what I'm doing for that is ninth fret, third string, sliding up to the 10th fret. And then index finger goes down on the uh, seventh fret, second string. So you have, and then you slide it back. So you're not picking that. It's actually a lot easier to do than it sounds. Just make sure you connect that lick to your A chord shape. So if you wanted to do that lick over an A chord. Uh, 
I hear that lick in bluegrass quite a bit. And a lot of what Jerry does is very bluegrass based. And so that, you know, that's the kind of thing that, that you would hear him do. Right? So that's our four chord. We go back to the one chord, same thing. Now we get to the five chord. I could have done the same formula. But why not mix it up? And I threw in a classic Jerry Garcia lick. Uh, which is very cool because he's tracing the notes of the arpeggio. So we're, we're going to be playing over an E chord. So I'm going to be up in this position, or I'm picturing it here. That's what the, that's what the arpeggio is. So you need to learn your arpeggios at some point. Uh, so this would be your E7 arpeggio. It's just all the arpeggio means is it's the notes that are in the chord. So your E7 arpeggio looks like this. Those are your four notes. And then they repeat an octave higher. And the reason I'm showing you the arpeggio for this is this move that I've heard Jerry do goes like this. So he's taking each note of the arpeggio and playing that note, but then playing the note right below it. Then you go to the next note in the arpeggio, the note below it. You go to the next note, see how cool that is? Now you can use this formula for any chord. Think about that. If you have an A chord, right? You can use that anytime you're soloing. If you get lost or you just need some little clever idea to work in, think about that. So we start this on the seventh fret, fifth string. We go down to the sixth fret and back. And then we're on the sixth fret, fourth string. Then up to the ninth fret, fourth string. Then the 5th fret 3rd string, that's the first part of the lick. And then I played... So this is another little chromatic thing. So I want you to walk away with this idea as well. Lots of great ideas in this, if I do say so myself. But this is another idea off of the A chord shape. Now remember, we're playing an E chord here when I do this. But I'm picturing these two frets when I make the chord, ninth fret and seventh fret. And I know that I've got notes that I can play between those two frets. So I've got seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine. And I can play the notes in between those as well. So I can go chromatically. So I can play any of those notes. And that's a very Jerry Garcia thing to do, to play these chromatic notes. So that's where that's coming from. It's ninth fret, uh, third string, seventh fret, second string. And then we walk it up, seven, eight, nine. Back to eight, seven. So it's. And then we come back to the third string and I go nine, eight, seven. So that's the second part of that E like it goes. And then we go back to the A. And look at what I'm picturing, the A bar chord here, right? Your A major bar chord using the E shape. So fifth fret, third string to the sixth fret, third string. There's your A triad. And then there's the other note in the A chord, which is the seventh fret, fourth string. So, so all together from the E, it goes. And then back to the, the intro. And then you can loop it there. And so I made the jam track loopable. But hopefully that gives you some jam ideas for what you can play using that A chord shape. It's just one chord shape, but look at all the stuff we can do with it. And you got to give it to guys like Jerry Garcia, who, you know, obviously figured this stuff out years and years ago, way before there was the internet. They just put on records and they figured it out. It's very clever. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next video for something new.